welcome to this introductory video on the foundations of public health, where we'll be discussing the five different domains within this field. We'll be defining the concept of health, focusing on specifically global health with a special emphasis on diseases in high income countries versus low income countries. We'll be defining the natural history of these diseases and ending with some disease prevention strategies in public health. First up, what are the five domains of public health? This picture briefly lists each, and in this next section we'll go through, talk about each one of these, as well as provide recent examples of public health applications. First, let's briefly define public health. This is going to be a field of study concerned with safeguarding and improving the health of a community as a whole. First up, we'll focus in on the field of epidemiology. This is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events and the prevention and control of health problems in human populations. With distribution defining the who, when, and where of the disease, whereas determinants defining the what and why of the disease. Throughout its history, epidemiology has provided an information basis for understanding the underlying causes of many diseases and health conditions, as well as providing knowledge of importance of prevention. This research enhances the prevailing perception of people and their respective environments. And in order to measure such rates, biostatistics is employed. This is the next field, which is defined as the development and application of statistical methods to biological experiments. This is going to encompass the collection as well as analysis of data from those biological experiments and the subsequent interpretation of results. Working together, epidemiologists and biostaticians develop testable hypotheses. Although there are often overlapping roles, both use this data to generate results that can be used to develop research programs. With these programs belonging to our third domain within the field, community and health behavioral promotion, which involves using this data gathered from epidemiologists and biostaticians to implement programs within communities. An example of this in the news is the implementation of wearing face masks in public spaces due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This leads us to our fourth domain of public health policy and management, which is perhaps the most well-known domain of public health that involves mainly the development and application of policy, as in the recent example of the COVID-19 pandemic. And lastly, the environmental health sciences comprise the largest domain of public health since environmental factors are thought to contribute significantly to many forms of chronic disease and vice versa, as a large proportion of the burden of disease is associated with environmental sources. These can all affect human populations and contribute to disease. Next up, we'll go through and define what is health. Here, we'll keep in mind two different definitions of health. With the older definition of health sometimes being negatively defined as the absence of disease and injury. This can be misleading and as such the World Health Organization has expanded on this definition and states a newer one where health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of infirmity. And with that said, the definition of health has evolved over the past 20 years to include at least five different constructs, and we'll go through each now. One, a healthy body. Two, high quality personal relationships. Three, a sense of purpose in life. Four, self-regarded mastery of life tasks. And five, resilience to stress, trauma, and change, which is perhaps the hardest one of all. And so with these in mind, I've pulled up a picture here of various examples in which different behaviors can yield positive health outcomes. So, for example, participating in daily and consistent physical activity can reduce stress. Drinking more water every day and eating your fruits and vegetables can also lead to a reduction in stress. These are all different factors that influence human health overall. 
but just like there are examples of ones that yield positive outcomes, there are some that yield negative outcomes, and we'll go through briefly examples here. For example, climate change is one. Another one is drugs or pathogens that are introduced to human populations, with another one being socioeconomic status, as abbreviated, that can lead to decreased access to health. And with this in mind, we'll go in and talk about global health. Briefly defining this, global health is an area for study, research, and practice that places a priority on improving health and achieving equity in health for all people worldwide. This field also encompasses the study and research of epidemics and pandemics worldwide to develop and implement interventions for public health. An outbreak it's called an epidemic when there is a sudden increase in cases. If this disease then spreads across several countries and affects a larger number of people, it is then classified as a pandemic, as in the most recent example in the news of the COVID-19 global pandemic. We'll go through some examples of epidemics as well with Ebola and Zika virus being something that public health professionals were called upon to investigate not long ago. Firearm mortality being a leading cause of death as well as the opioid epidemic in the United States. Foodborne outbreaks such as the recent example of the 2006 outbreak of E. coli in the United States which was linked to fresh spinach. The influenza epidemic, the H1N1 flu that came to the attention of the CDC in 2009. And then lastly, as we briefly mentioned, the COVID-19 pandemic, which we do go over in greater detail in our other video that I do encourage you to check out as a companion to my other chapters in this textbook. Next. We'll go through and briefly define the natural history of human diseases and what this entails. The natural history of disease is the course a disease takes in individual people from its pathological onset until its eventual resolution through complete recovery or death. This involves four stages of progression, one being the stage of susceptibility, with this stage occurring prior to the disease, two being the stage of pre-symptomatic disease, which occurs in asymptomatic individuals that have started showing some risk factors, three being the stage of clinical disease, which seeks to reduce further damage, and four being the stage of recovery, disability, and or death. And with that, we'll bring up another visual here to kind of look at a timeline and define these four stages, with one occurring pre-disease, Two being in the preclinical phase, again, the individual has the disease but no symptoms. Three being the clinical phase, the, the person has the disease, whereas four is, did the person recover? Did the person pass on? And with that said, the first physician to study the progression of a human disease was John Snow. He was a British anesthesiologist, oftentimes known as the father of epidemiology. He followed a cholera outbreak and conducted a natural experiment in which we will discuss in our next video. Lastly, we'll go through some disease prevention strategies in public health. That said, I'll bring up an image of a quick mnemonic to remember these with a primary disease prevention strategy being aimed towards prevention of disease, secondary screening and tertiary treatment. We'll go through briefly each one of these and expand on them. Primary can actually be split into two broad categories. You can have a passive primary disease prevention strategy. And what this means is there is no behavior change on the part of the individual, as in drinking daily fluoridated water. Whereas the second type of primary disease prevention is an active one. You guessed it here, there is a behavior change on the part of the individual, such as receiving an immunization where the individual has to physically go in and get vaccinated. Next up, secondary prevention, we already briefly listed. 
This is where you screen early in order to manage an asymptomatic disease. Again, individuals here have some risk factors. Tertiary, people are already symptomatic and they're treating the disease to reduce complications. And finally, there is a quaternary stage which entails no unnecessary interventions being used in order to minimize incidental harm. And a prime example of this is imaging studies. And with that said, we'll go on to our black screen of spaced repetition where we'll quiz commonly tested concepts. With number one being, who was Jon Snow? And no, we are not referring to the Game of Thrones character. Yes, you got it. Jon Snow was an epidemiologist who used natural experiments. Number two, true or false? The stage of presymptomatic disease follows the stage of susceptibility. Yes, this is in fact true. Remember, there are four stages, one being the stage of presymptomatic disease and two being the stage of susceptibility. Number three, which intervention occurs before symptoms but after risk factors are present? This would be a secondary type of prevention. Number four. This is an example of what type of disease prevention strategy where halfway houses are used for people recovering from addiction. You guessed it, tertiary prevention. And lastly, number five. Screening for breast cancer is an example of which disease prevention strategy? Again, this is a secondary prevention public health strategy. And with that said, our next slide is a brief overview of everything that was discussed in the video. Please subscribe below, like, and share.